What happens when a fighter jet pushes beyond its maximum altitude? Picture this. A lone fighter jet, a sleek predator of the skies, pushing its limits. It climbs higher and higher, a silver speck against the deepening blue. The pilot, eyes fixed on the altimeter, is determined to reach the impossible, to push the jet past its maximum altitude. This is a dangerous game. The air thins with every foot of altitude gained. The jet enters a realm where survival is a constant battle against the elements. Up here at the edge of the sky, danger lurks in every meter. The reasons why exceeding a jet's maximum altitude is dangerous are simple. It's a recipe for disaster. Engines struggle, lift diminishes, systems fail, the aircraft itself starts to become uncontrollable, and the pilot? They face challenges too. The thin air makes it hard to think. It becomes a struggle to even breathe. This is not a game for the faint of heart. This is the extreme edge of aviation. Gasping for air. Engines on the brink. A jet engine is a powerful beast. It gulps down air, mixes it with fuel, and ignites the mixture to generate thrust. But even the most powerful engines have their limits. As a jet climbs higher, the air gets thinner. This means less oxygen. Less oxygen means a weaker burn. Engines start to sputter and cough. They lose power. It's like trying to run a marathon while breathing through a straw. Think of it like this. You're climbing a mountain. The higher you go, the harder it is to breathe. Your lungs struggle to get enough oxygen. It's the same for a jet engine at high altitude. The engine is starved for air. It's struggling to breathe. And just like a climber who pushes too high without enough oxygen, the engine can fail completely. A wing and a prayer when lift fails. A jet's wings are its lifeline. They generate lift, the force that counters gravity and keeps the plane airborne. But lift depends on air density. At high altitudes, with thinner air, lift decreases. This means the wings have to work harder to keep the jet aloft. The pilot has to fly faster just to maintain level flight. Imagine yourself trying to swim in a pool of honey. It's thick and dense, making movement difficult. Now imagine trying to swim in water. It's much easier, right? That's because water is less dense than honey. It's the same principle with lift. Thinner air at high altitudes is like the honey, making it harder for the jet to stay airborne. The wings are struggling to find their grip. Systems failure. Losing control at the top of the world. Modern fighter jets are complex machines. They rely on intricate systems to function properly. Hydraulics, avionics, even the oxygen supply for the pilot all depend on specific pressure and temperature ranges. At extreme altitudes, these systems are pushed to their limits. The cold, thin air can cause lines to freeze and seals to fail. Instruments can give faulty readings. It's like a chain reaction. One system failure can lead to another and another. Soon, the pilot is struggling to maintain control. The jet becomes a bucking bronco. It wants to stall, it wants to spin. And at that altitude, recovering from a stall or a spin is incredibly difficult. It's a fight for survival. There's a point at high altitudes, a narrow margin of speed and altitude, where a jet is on the razor's edge of control. This is the coffin corner. At this critical juncture, the stall speed of the aircraft, the minimum speed required to maintain lift, and the critical Mach number, the speed at which airflow over the wings becomes supersonic, converge. The jet becomes incredibly unstable. Imagine walking a tightrope. One wrong step, one gust of wind, and you're finished. That's what flying in the coffin corner is like. The jet can stall and plummet from the sky at any moment, or the shock waves from supersonic airflow can rip the wings apart. It's a deadly dance with disaster. Human limits, the ultimate constraint. The pilot is the heart of the machine, but even the most experienced pilot is still human. At high altitudes, the thin air takes its toll on the body. Hypoxia, a lack of oxygen to the brain, sets in. Judgment becomes impaired, reactions slow. It's like being drunk, but without the fun part. Imagine trying to solve a complex math problem while holding your breath. It's nearly impossible. That's what it's like for a pilot suffering from hypoxia. They're trying to make life or death decisions, but their brain isn't getting enough oxygen. It's a recipe for disaster. Designed for purpose staying within the lines. Modern fighter jets are designed to be formidable weapons within a specific flight envelope. This envelope encompasses their optimal altitude and speed ranges. Exceeding these limits is not only dangerous, it's strategically pointless. 
It compromises the jet's performance and puts the pilot at unnecessary risk. Think of a race car driver. They wouldn't try to take a Formula One car off-roading. It's not what it's built for. Same goes for fighter jets. They're designed to be agile and deadly within their operational ceiling. Pushing them beyond that is like asking a racehorse to climb a tree. Skimming the stratosphere, the rare breed. There are exceptions to every rule. Aircraft like the SR-71 Blackbird and the U-2 spy plane were designed for extreme altitude reconnaissance. They operate at the very edge of the atmosphere where few others dare to venture. But these are highly specialized aircraft built for a specific purpose and flown by elite pilots. These are the outliers, the exceptions that prove the rule. They are not fighter jets in the traditional sense. They are marvels of engineering designed to operate in the most extreme environments. The price of too high risk without reward. Pushing a fighter jet beyond its maximum altitude is a dangerous gamble. The risks far outweigh any potential rewards. Engine failure, loss of lift, system malfunctions, aerodynamic instability and human limitations all converge to create a perfect storm of danger. It's a high-stakes game where the only winning move is not to play. Modern fighter jets are designed to be formidable within their designated flight envelope. Pushing them beyond these limits is a recipe for disaster, a gamble with both a machine and a life. It is a risk not worth taking.